All right, everyone, today we're gonna to talk about karyotypes and chromosomal disorders. By the end of this video, you should be able to read a karyotype and use it to identify the type of chromosomal disorder that an individual has. I'm gonna explain both of those steps, how to read the karyotype and how to identify the chromosomal disorder. So let's start by uh, looking at this cell here, okay? So a cell, uh, is going to have a nucleus. That's what you see in the dark purple there. And then uh, the yellow X-shaped things are chromosomes. And in this nucleus, it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five chromosomes. All right. Uh, we talked previously about chromosomes, but just to refresh your memory, chromosomes are made up of DNA, and when you have a little section of one chromosome, that is called a gene, that little section of that chromosome. So it uh, codes for a trait, um, maybe like eye color or your height, something like that. Okay, so a karyotype is just a picture of all the chromosomes that are inside this nucleus. All right, so for humans, humans have a total of 46 chromosomes. And um, because uh, half of those chromosomes come from dad and uh, half of them come from mom, that means dad gave you 23 chromosomes and mom gave you 23 chromosomes. So in this picture, you may notice the numbers 1, 2, 3, and then you see 22, and then number 23 would be this last pair down here. So you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, and that's because uh, for every chromosome, like chromosome number one, you got a copy of chromosome number one from dad, and you got a copy of chromosome number one from mom. So you have two copies of chromosome number one, and so we call this a pair. And so you would have a total of 23 pairs of chromosome chromosomes. You may notice that uh, they are ordered in their size, based on their size. So number one is the biggest of all, and number two is just a little smaller, number three is a little smaller, and on and on. Um, what you need to know is that the first 22 pairs are what we call autosomes. And an autosome uh, is not a sex chromosome. Your sex chromosome determines your biological sex. So, down here, the 23rd pair, there's uh, two possible uh, sex chromosomes. You can either have an X, which is kind of tall, and a, or a Y, which is kind of short. All right? So, if an individual is XX, then we say that individual is a biological female. If, so I'll write that down here, if the individual is XX, then we say that individual is a biological female, or their biological sex is female. If the individual has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, then we say their biological sex is male. So when you look at a karyotype, you're going to see uh, 46 chromosomes total, so like 1, 2, 3, 4, all right, but there's going to be 23 pairs, and that's because uh, for every chromosome, one copies from dad, one copies from mom, and then the last, the chromosomes at the bottom of the screen, or in the bottom right corner, those are going to be your sex chromosomes. If you have two X's, then the individual's biological sex is female. If you have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, then the biological sex is male. And like I said, the Y chromosome is very short, small. The X chromosome looks taller. All right, so how do you get a chromosomal disorder? Um, well, first, let me just define what a chromosomal disorder is. So it's when you have either you're missing a chromosome or you have an extra chromosome. That's how you get a chromosome, or that's what a chromosomal disorder is, but how do you get one? Well, you get it 
through this event during anaphase called non-disjunction. And here's what happens. Normally during metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the middle and then in anaphase, they separate. So uh, the blue chromosome here, it's separated normally in uh, anaphase. The chromatids separated from one another. Same thing for this green chromosome here. During anaphase, the chromatids separated normally. But if you look at this red chromosome, it didn't separate. It failed to separate. And when that happens, we call that non-disjunction. Uh, so what's the consequence of this if you get non-disjunction? So I'm going to show you in this little picture what the consequence would be. Um, so I've got um, green chromosomes call, uh, right here, green, to, uh, green ho homologous chromosomes, and uh, also orange uh, homologous chromosomes. And in blue, this is going to be the male, and in pink, this is going to be the female. So let's uh, show what would normally happen in the male. Okay, so normally the X, uh, the X's are going to line up in the middle during uh, anaphase, and when they, oh, I'm sorry, when they separate, um, when they separate from one another, you would, uh, if you cut if you cut the cell oh, wait, my pen's not working very well uh, if you separate the cell right down the middle then that means you are going to get a work with my pen <laughs> you're going to get a green chromosome in each cell and also an orange chromosome in each cell and then when uh, those separate the chromatids right down the middle like that when you cut that right down the middle and they separate during mitosis then you are going to get a chromatid uh, once the chromatids separate you're going to get a green uh, right there right there um, same thing here one green one green and one orange one orange one orange one orange so hopefully you can see that that would be uh, and and these these cells here would be like sperm cells that we just made and inside those sperm cells you'd have two chromosomes uh, one is green, one is orange. Now, in female, let's see what happens if there was non-disjunction in a female. So, same process, we cut the cell in half during uh, anaphase, and when the cell splits, um, you're going to get a green chromosome here and an orange chromosome there. Uh, same thing going on here green and orange um, but let's say that non disjunction happens in this step so when this cell splits this orange chromosome right there is is going to go through non disjunction so it's not going to separate this cell on the other hand down here it's going to separate like normal so what that would mean is I would get green, it did separate, uh, and this green separated as well, but not all the oranges separated. This one did not, so then my cell at the top is not going to have an orange chromosome, and the bottom one is still going to have uh, the full chromosome there this one did separate. So now if you compare the male and this would be like uh, this would be like the eggs that the female produces. Okay so you can see that this egg right here is missing 
a chromosome. And what that would mean is if this sperm right here and this egg were to come together and make a zygote, then that zygote would only have two copies of the green chromosome. That would be normal. You're supposed to have one copy from dad, one copy from mom. That's correct. But this individual would only have one copy uh, of this orange chromosome that it got from a dad. It doesn't have a second copy. It's missing uh, that one. And so that individual would be missing a chromosome. Um, let me show you what would happen, though, if uh, you had an extra chromosome. So how would that happen? Well, say that me a second to erase. Say that you took this egg from the female and this sperm from the male and they formed a zygote. Well then you're going to have two copies of the green chromosome. That's correct. One from mom, one from dad. But when you look at this orange chromosome, you're only going to have, or you're going to have three. One from dad, and you got two from mom. And so this individual would have an extra chromosome. So that's how non-disjunction, it all came down to this step right here. When a chromosome fails to separate, um, you end up uh, with the possibility of having a, a chromosomal disorder. And so last, uh, let me show you this example. So if that orange chromosome that we just saw was chromosome number 18, then when you looked at this individual's karyotype, they would have uh, one chromosome uh, from dad, one from mom for, for each of these chromosomes. But for chromosome number 18, it, it had, this individual would have an uh, extra chromosome. And so that's why you count one, two, three here. Again, because when we look, we had one, two, three from mom. Uh, or we, yeah, we got two from mom and one from dad for a total of three. And so that would be, for example, how you'd get trisomy 18. The tri just stands for three copies of a chromosome. And which chromosome are we talking about? We're talking about chromosome number 18. Now, if I asked you, what is the biological sex of this individual? You would look at the bottom right because these are the sex chromosomes. Since this individual has an X and this individual has a Y chromosome, they're XY, this would be a biological male that has trisomy 18. Now it's your turn. You're going to read uh, some karyotypes and identify the genetic disorders. And I've made a list here. Uh, where I, I name the disorder, and then I tell you um, what's the abnormality with the chromosomes. Uh, so use this picture to uh, identify the chromosomal disorders uh, based on the pictures of, this, of the karyotypes that I give you.